Hello, my name is Leonard Knight and I made this mountain 22 years here and I'd love to give you a tour of it. Uh, I estimate 100,000 gallons of paint in 22 years and as we walk up here I'd like to show you the waterfalls and the God is love on it, okay? I made a hot air balloon 22 years ago going it rotted out here in uh, anyway I want to show you a, what happened in 22 years with a mountain full of adobe and clay and a lot of people loving God and I'd like to have this little video so I can send it to hospitals and uh, senior citizens home all over the world and I'll do the best I can to give you a tour of it as we walk up here you can see the two waterfalls in the blue in the ocean in the blue and the boat in the waves. And right here, about 10 years ago, the farmers gave me 80 bales of hay. And I made a little hogan to live in, a little igloo. And it got on the England Discovery Channel. And I'd love to show you the inside of it. And this is the inside of it. You can look in there if you want to. All made out of broken glass and window putty. And I decorated it. And a lot of people take pictures of it. And it was a lot of fun to make. I'd like to have you take some pictures of it. The next thing I'd like to show you is a museum that I started about eight or nine years ago. And uh, as we walk in here, I'd like to have the camera on the Folk Art Society of America. Five years ago, they tried to put it into a national treasure, and last summer it's going through the Senate or the Congress. So I'm excited about people really liking God is Love Mountain a lot. And uh, I'd like to show you in here. I started making a museum in here about eight or ten years ago also and I made that tree here with a wheelbarrow because I found old car tires out in the desert and I found the limbs out in the desert and it's a handmade car tire tree and when the adobe is wet I take a half a gallon of uh, adobe and throw it and I hit it with my fist and I got a flower and I've been spending a couple years off and on just putting flowers all over the place and uh, I'd love to show you around here real slowly and take pictures of it. And people are bringing in car windows out in the desert. And uh, everything is donated here. The sticks are out in the desert. Doing good. Right here I'd like to show you a, a funny looking tree that I'm making with a come along and branches. And if I get a hundred more branches around, I'm going to put the bales of hay up here and try to dome this whole thing over as a museum. Probably another 3,000 gallons 
uh, 3,000 bales of hay and the sticks are still out in the desert and I'd like to show you some of the best adobe in the whole world as far as I'm concerned. The whole mountain gives me the clay and if you were to pick this up it, it weighs as much as a stone almost. It's really solid and the whole mountain gives me this beautiful adobe. And I got a tractor with some in it here. And this is what it's like when you mix it for three or four days and let it soak and you put a lot of straw with it and then it'll turn back into a clay. So the whole mountain is here and the people are donating paint and people seem to me loving me a lot and I've always wanted to put the tour to a senior citizen home. That's my purpose. And I'd love to show you the yellow brick road. Maybe we'll walk up there real quick, okay? This is the very start of the yellow brick road because of the Wizard of Oz. And uh, I'd like to walk the camera up here all the way, okay? You're doing real good on that. And uh, as we walk up, you see the waterfalls and the blue paint. Yeah, that's a good place for the camera. Stay right there a minute, okay? And as the camera looks down here, you can see the waterfalls. It looks like an ocean, sort of. And there's a boat in the waves. And this is the very top of the mountain. And as you look out here, you can see part of Slab City where people park during the winter and they have visits and uh, they have campfires. And I'd like to show you one more thing. This is kind of the top view of it, and maybe I'd like to have the camera kind of shining down on the waterfalls. And I'd want to walk over here about 100 feet real slow. And I'd love to have you put the camera on the top of this museum that I'm making. Maybe we'll go around here, okay? There's one more thing I want to show you because a lot of architects like to t take a look at my uh, half museum built. And I'd like to have the camera taking a picture of that. Over here. 
maybe if it's possible yeah i'd like to have you film this for a minute or two But this is the inside of that uh, museum that I want to cap over completely. And a lot of, of people like the idea of all those sticks holding up the bales of hay. I thought that might be interesting. To I'd like to show you the Lord's Prayer that I put made in Adobe. And I had a lot of fun making it. And I'd like to have the camera show it. Uh, up close, kind of. <clears throat> There's the Lord's Prayer, and I made it out of Adobe, and a lot of people like that. And I got John 3:16, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believeth in him shall have everlasting life. I put that up here in Adobe too. And, uh, and up here in the waterfalls, I've got to work on it more. But I got nine fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, temperance. And uh, I've got a lot of work to do on this. But The, the, main, the main thing I made this video for us and I'm going to show you it within one minute over here. And I'll have you put the camera where you think it should show that God is love real good and the sin is prayer. You think that'd be a good place to end this video? I do. The main purpose of this video is I wanted to put God is love in a beautiful, simple way to everybody. God loves everybody in the whole world. And I just want the whole world to know that God loves everybody and I love everybody too. That's why I wanted to make this little video. I want people in the senior citizen home, people in the elderly home that can't never see it. I'd like to send you a video of this and just tell you you can have it and you can play it if you want to. And I feel very privileged that I, I can do this. And uh, that's all I want to say. But, but I, I'm going to try to get a lot of videos of this. And I'm going to try to send one to your hospitals. And just let everybody do what they want to do with it. And God bless you all. I really love you all a lot. And I hope you enjoy this video. Out in the desert, between the Salton Sea and the Chocolate Mountains, sits a monument known as Salvation Mountain. Salvation Mountain attracts thousands of visitors every year. It is a work in progress started in 1984 by a man named Leonard Knight. The story you are about to hear is a testimony of one man's abounding faith and determination. One man with no means, no materials, and no apparent skills just a burning desire to share his simple faith with the world. Over the next 30 minutes, we hope to tell a story of love, transformation, and a lifetime of childlike faith. My name is Leonard Knight and I made this mountain 22 years here and I'd love to give you a tour of it. Uh, I estimate 100,000 gallons of paint in 22 years and as we walk up here I'd like to show you the waterfalls and the God is love on it, okay? Leonard Knight was born on November 1st, 1931, about 8 miles from Burlington, Vermont. 
He was the fourth child in his family, with two more to come after him. We lived on a hill, and we'd coast down on the sled yeah. right into the school. Yeah. There's, and there's 24 kids there, a little school. Then I went to Shelburne School, which was 60 kids in it. And it was just plain too big of a school. So kids would pick on me, and, and I'd run and hide and skip school, and it, it just didn't work. Leonard dropped out of school in the 10th grade. In 1951, Leonard was drafted into the Army. He was transferred to Fort Knox, where he trained as a mechanic over the next couple of months before being deployed to Korea for the remainder of the war. It was a funny situation, but uh, they put me in as, mo as motor sergeant in, uh, after three or four months there. And uh, the tanks would come in, and they really had to get it ready because they were in that last big push. And they'd be cold outside, and they'd want to fill up with gas. And uh, I'd say, well, go inside and get warm, let me do it. Oh, side, you don't have to do it. But I had that easy going attitude. After the war, Leonard returned home to Vermont, where he worked as a mechanic at a local car dealership. In 1967, Leonard made a trip to San Diego that changed everything. As we walk up here, you can see the two waterfalls in the blue, and the ocean in the blue, and the boat in the waves. In 1967, I was visiting my, uh, my sister. She lived in California, and for years, I'd go back and forth. I'd go drive from, I'd pick apples in Vermont to make enough money so I could just skip out to California. My sister lived in Lemon Grove, California. I remember the spot, it's a nice house. I went to visit her, and she made me go to church. And I did not like the church whatsoever. I mean, I didn't like God at that time or Jesus Christ any, and, and I wasn't doing nothing that God could have been pleased with. And she made me go to church, and I ran away from her in the morning. I, I, just, I can't go to church. And outside of her house, about 15 or 20 steps, I, I could almost pinpoint the spot. I got in my truck and a little car I had, by myself, there's nobody around. I started saying, Jesus, I'm a sinner, please come into my heart. Jesus, I'm a sinner, please come into my heart. I said that about eight times. After saying it eight or 10 times, Jesus, I'm a sinner, please come into my heart. I was really getting it down in there. And I told God, I, I, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm gonna say it for 20 minutes or a half hour. And by the time I got done, done saying, Jesus, I'm a sinner, please come in. I was crying like a baby. I ran back into my sister's house, and, and I said, nobody, nobody ever told me about Jesus before. Irene, why didn't you tell me about Jesus? And she says, I've been praying for you for eight years, and you just won't listen. <laughs> but Leonard did listen, and it changed his life. He was given a purpose, a sense of direction, and a vision that was to be expanded four years later. In 1971, a hot air balloon passed over Burlington, Vermont, and it attracted a lot of attention. As Leonard stared up at the balloon, he overheard a small child asking her mother what the balloon said, and he heard the mother reply with the name of a popular beer. It was at this moment that Leonard knew what he could do for Christ. And I looked up, probably almost 35 years ago, and I said, Jesus Christ, I want a hot air balloon that says God Almighty loves them, and the sinner's prayer is on 35 years ago, and I'd nagged God for 10 years. I prayed almost daily, Jesus, I, I just got to get a hot air balloon. Nine, a year go by, churches wouldn't help me, nobody would help. 1974, God, I just got to get a hot air balloon for Jesus Christ. 1976, 1977, 19, 
Ten years I prayed like that. I gave up. I, I remember telling God, uh, I'm not going to nag you no more. I've been ten years praying for a hot air balloon, and you don't want one, and Jesus Christ don't want one, and I don't want one. God Almighty, I'm not bothering you anymore. And man, I woke up that night, and Jesus Christ, I quit. There's a million people out there can know Jesus, and no one will know Jesus because I quit. Jesus Christ, I'm a quitter. Please, just forgive me. Jesus, God, I want a hot air balloon now more than ever. And finally in Nebraska in 1980, I was going back to Vermont, and I broke down in Nebraska. And I, I only had to really stay there a day or two. My starter burned up, and the junkyard man there gave me a good deal on a starter. And uh, Copy Jones was his name from Gibbon, Nebraska. And he says, I don't know, Leonard, all you talk about is a hot air balloon, so I'll help you build one. And I kind of remember hugging him and, oh, thanks. And he says, what can I do? And I says, I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Jones contacted the Raven Balloon Industry in South Dakota and arranged for Leonard to buy 10-foot scraps of balloon material for just $5 a bag. Copy Jones and his friends would prove to be Leonard's greatest supporters for the next three years while Leonard sewed the balloon. His wife gave me a little sewing machine. And sometimes in that three years of doing that, it was below zero, and Copy Jones gave me a great big heat lamp. And the heat lamp would thaw out the material in my hands and keep me warm, and I would sew. And uh, one time they, they said something like, the guy's going to kill himself out there, 2 o'clock in the morning, sewing the balloon in a windstorm. And it got approximately 200 feet high, 100 foot wide. They told me it was too big. And I'll agree with them. God, <laughs> it was too big. 25 years ago, more or less, they gave me an eye quilt in a junkyard. And I made this apparatus to put the hot air balloon up. And there's where I put the balloon. And I had a five foot fire box here. And I'd have a red hot in there. And I had a, a big fan here. This, this fan had a four horsepower motor on it. And it would put the air into the balloon and I had three weed burners on it, trying to put a balloon up 200 foot high and 100 foot wide, and it never did go out. But I tried over and over and over again. And uh, I look back on that, and boy, there was a lot of work in that. You pull out a 200 foot balloon at three o'clock in the morning, and you work until nine just to get it ready. And the wind comes up at 10.30 and it blows it down. Well, you do that seven days a week for about three months. And man, this never did get up. Leonard's final attempt to launch the balloon was in 1982 in a little place called Nyland, California. It was here that the wear and tear of constant exposure to the elements achieved their final victory. The balloon was rotten. And it just plain rotted out on me. It got to the place where uh, it, it's, it's not going to work. And uh, that's when I told God I'm going to stay here one week and make a little eight foot one. Hmm. 22 years later, I'm still here. Right here, I'd like to show you a, a funny looking tree that I'm making with a come along and branches. And if I get a hundred more branches around, I'm gonna put the bales of hay up here and try to dome this whole thing over as a museum. Probably another 3,000 gallons, uh, 3,000 bales of hay. And the sticks are still out in the desert. And I'd like to show you some of the best adobe in the whole world, as far as I'm concerned. The whole mountain gives me the clay. And if you were to pick this up, it, it weighs as much as a stone almost. It's really solid. And the whole mountain gives me this beautiful adobe. Though Leonard's previous ambition of making a balloon had failed, he was undeterred. He decided to stay in Slab City for one week and make a small eight-foot replica of the balloon out of concrete and clay. This was the start of what would be known as Salvation Mountain. And I'd go to the dump and pick up cement, old cement in the dump. Well, I was only going to stay a week anyway, and uh, 
I don't, I don't make excuses for doing it wrong, but I'd mix it 20 to 1 just to make it bigger. I mean, I cared less about constructing nothing. And uh, I kind of remember a man blowing his horn at me after maybe four days. Hey, you there. And I figured, well, what do you want? I know where there's some old cement at the dump. I'll get it for you if you want it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I want it. Go get it. And uh, that made me stay a couple of weeks. So I stayed. And then after, uh, I, I think it was about eight, eight months, I, I never even had a wheelbarrow. I had just a rubber bucket. I'd put the adobe in and carry it with the smack. I went on and on, and after about four or five months, uh, I got, God finally got me enthused about this. Leonard continued work on the monument, adding cement, sand, old scraps of metal, and two-by-fours to the pile until it was tall enough to be recognized by the locals as a mountain. He then painted over the entire thing with scripture verses and a message of love. All went well until 1989, when something unusual happened after a small rainstorm. 10 or 15 days later, the sun was out like this, and I was painting a flower on that, and all of a sudden I saw a crack. And I said, well, I can fix that with a wheelbarrow full of adobe, and then it looked like that in 20 seconds. The whole thing collapsed. And I looked up, and people thought I'd get discouraged by then. But I looked up, and I said, God Almighty, people could have got killed with that. And then I looked up, that's when I said, God Almighty, you build it. You're going to have to do it, God. Leonard's has 14 years and it rotted out bloom, four years in a mountain and it's rotted down. God, you do it. And ever since then, I've been trying to get rid of Leonard. <laughs> I gotta get rid of Leonard because he's in the way, totally. And I've, I've wanted to have that attitude ever since. God, you, you make sure not much Leonard gets in there because it's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, here it is. Leonard rebuilt his mountain over the next five years, during which time it grew in fame and became more recognized by the people of Nyland. But Leonard still wasn't satisfied. Not enough people were seeing the message that Jesus saves. The tables turned, though, in 1994, when a blessing came in the most clever disguise. And this is the very top of the mountain. And as you look out here, you can see part of Slab City where people park during the winter. Slab City is the abandoned Marine Barracks Camp Dunlap from the World War II era. In 1961, the Department of Defense deemed the camp no longer necessary. All the military buildings have been removed from the site, leaving only the concrete slabs. These slabs have become the home to travelers from the north, and the site is now known as Slab City. The inhabitants of Slab City are called slabbers, or snowbirds, referencing the migration of the northerners to the south for the winter. In 1994, Imperial County supervisors decided to turn the area into a government campground and charged the snowbirds for using the area. One obstacle stood in their way, Salvation Mountain. You can't have a religious monument in a paid campground. So they had to take the mountain down first. So it ended up as a toxic nightmare contaminating the people with lead in the pan. And uh, the Los Angeles Times got a hold of it and said uh, the laws of God and the laws of man are going to collide in Nyla. <laughs> Every museum collided on my side because this Mona Lisa has lead in the pan. I mean, you have to control this somehow. They played dirty pool on this, which it's okay with me now. The, the state gave me some yellow paint that they use on the highways, and that was toxic. So I'm a toxic nightmare. <laughs> and that got in the paper. Slowly the battle grew in intensity. Leonard got more and more attention, and the state grew more and more frustrated. The supervisors in this town said, uh, we're gonna have to go to Sacramento on this, get something bigger. The state performed soil tests, and the results showed that there were contaminants in the soil that would require the mountain to be removed. The turning point came when Leonard hired an independent company to perform the same soil tests for lead and other toxic materials. The results came in a few weeks later. The soil was clean. With the evidence Leonard had presented, the overwhelming amount of letters received, and Leonard's determination to fight it out to the last, the officials finally backed off, leaving Leonard with his mountain and a fortune in free publicity.
I started making a museum in here about eight or ten years ago also and I made that tree here with a wheelbarrow because I found old car tires out in the desert and I found the limbs out in the desert and it's a handmade car tire tree and when the adobe is wet I take a half a gallon of uh, adobe and throw it and I hit it with my fist and I got a flower and I've been spending a couple years off and on just putting flowers all over the place and uh, I'd love to show you around here real slowly and take pictures of it. And people are bringing in car windows out in the desert. And uh, everything is donated here. The sticks are out in the desert. Since his victory against the state, God has continued to bless Leonard's diligence and faith. In 1998, Leonard started what he calls the museum. The museum consists of hay bales, stacked together like bricks, using adobe for mortar. This structure is then supported by his handmade trees. Leonard takes surprising care when building the museum, bolting every branch together. I wanted to get it stable. And now every time I put up a bale of straw, I put a stick Boy, to hold it up. Killer. Leonard, did you, did you make any blueprints of it? None. None. You just yes, do it. I just do it. Just and when I make a mistake, I, I just correct it. What? One little old guy doing all that's pretty incredible. You know, I, I never had a time clock. Oh, okay. But it's been about 22 years. 22 years? More or less here. Yeah. Then I had 14 years praying and making a hot air balloon with God is love on it. Gathering limbs from the desert is yet another one of his daily tasks. It's going to make a better stick than you think. Leonard takes old fallen trees and cleans them up, using the branches to support the museum. Cutting the wood can be a challenge to him at over 70 years old, but he figures that with a few good friends to give him a hand, he's having a good time. <laughs> Salvation Mountain attracts tourists from all over the world, from as close as an island, and as far away as Europe, visitors come to see the mountain and the man that is so dedicated to his mission that he has done the seemingly impossible with so very little. Her name is Loco Lynn, and I'm Loco. No, you're Ray. Crazy Ray. <laughs> I got it backwards. <laughs> I'm Crazy Ray, and this is Loco Lynn. We live in La Mesa, and I think it's more than amazing what the man has done here. There's just there's no word for it. You got to see it. Yes, I'm uh, Rob van Veenendaal, it's a Dutch name. A friend of mine once wanted me to see this. I'm a painter, I do like to paint, it's wonderful. The man can believe uh, he has to do this and finish it. And it's wonderful, I think it's wonderful. Yeah, I, I'd come out here a number of years and I never, I never physically found the mountain, which is hard to believe. <laughs> but uh, so today when I got up, I said this is going to be my mission, to come out and find Salvation Mountain. So I got on the bike and rode down the road, and everybody else seems to know where to find it but me. I was living in Vermont, and it was around 1999. And I was watching Ripley's Believe It or Not program on television, and they covered a story about Leonard Knight and his mountain. And so I thought, oh, you know, I knew that I was going to be returning to California. And I said, well, I, I have to see that mountain. Who could have 27 years of devotion to something that the normal person, you know, my, my son has horses, he'd feed the horses the hay. Somebody would take the wood and burn it for firewood. Not Leonard, he makes this. I see more than only a believer. I see a, uh, uh, it's hard to explain for me in, in English, uh, a life's job. If you're just too lazy to get off your couch, get somebody to help you up and come out here to see this place. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I need to wander around and really soak it up. Leonard loves his visitors and treats everyone like an honored guest. Leonard tries to give every visitor a picture puzzle or a video tour DVD. Though the average guest is grateful for the gift, some are more appreciative than others. See that, yeah, it looks the same, well, thank huh? you for It's the mountain. Being here. It's a puzzle of the mountain, huh? Puzzle of the mountain. Yeah. 
Leonard Knight's simple message and abundant faith are an inspiration to many. Leonard's meager life is an encouragement to those without that faith and purpose are the essential elements of a fulfilled life. But even the powerful and wealthy are inspired by Leonard's testimony. Jack Dory is one such man and has become one of Leonard's closest friends. About three years ago, my driver had brought my uh, bus and trailer and cars and stuff down and was setting it all up. And he had directions and he went down to an island and spent a little bit of time with Leonard at Salvation Mountain. Well, when I uh, flew in, he was telling me that I needed to get down there and take a look at this. So, in a few weeks, I jump on my Harley Davidson and ride down and meet Leonard for the first time. I, I met Jack quite a while ago in a motorcycle group, and he was an ordinary little uh, friend of mine. And I want to make this real short, but I, I started to check him out in the Bible, which I do to certain people. And uh, when I first saw Leonard, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, this place out in the middle of nowhere, and I think, man, this guy is probably a little bit uh, wacko because you don't know what to expect. And we talk a lot about purpose in the industry I'm in. And uh, he had purpose as much as it, I did, or, or my senior guys. Everybody's more than welcome to straggle up if you want. Leonard's only 74 years old, I'd recommend you manage. <laughs> I finally had to come to the conclusion, this guy's been here 20 plus years with a four inch paintbrush, swabbing over 100,000 gallons, living in the back of a flatbed truck. And I thought, this guy's gotta be dedicated to live like this. It, it worked out that he, he was on the Bible. And to make a real long story short, it was the Bible that connected us together. And then one time when he hauled it out, his Bible, I could tell that, uh, He'd been visiting that thing a lot. Uh, it just wasn't something he dusted off for the tourist. I don't know, there's not much else I can say except the Word of God pulled us together. And that's the biggest love that can happen to anybody, has God's love come down upon us. But every time I've been there, in some way, I've went away with a blessing. The love gets better. I think good gets better. In mm -hmm. uh, outside of that, I, I'm just, excited that I ran into the man. <laughs> it's probably because he don't expect or want anything from me. Because I'm in a people business and, and most of the people I deal with, not all, need something as they well should. For somebody that's maybe ministers more to me than I do them is sort of weird after 33 plus years. And uh, had some special moments with Leonard and when he, I usually at some point have him get his guitar out and bang away on that thing. And Lord God Almighty, put a harness on my back. Jesus, make me do my share. Cause the harvest is so ripe. Yesterday I did not care. You ever have the opportunity to get to Salvation Mountain right out of Nylon, California? I would tell you you're on vacation or traveling on business. I would make it a point to take a, several hours and go down there and wander around yourself. Leonard's joy is not found so much in the mountain as in the opportunity that it provides him to share his simple testimony of faith with others. I was reading in the Lord's Prayer where Jesus says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Ouch, I had a problem with that. <laughs> because somebody stole my brand new chainsaw and I, I got angry and I said, well, God, I'm angry. And Jesus says, I'm angry with you, Leonard. I said, no, that's not good enough. God, I, I'm loving him the best I can. And Jesus says, well, I'll love you the best I can. I said, that's not good enough either. That's no good. So we can read the Lord's Amen. Prayer. And then when we get to that statement well, that Jesus means. made, we don't want to overlook it. Huh. We, we'll overlook all the easy things. Yeah. But that's a rough one. 
Well, John, this is uh, pretty amazing. Uh, the conviction that this guy has to build this mountain. I'm amazed of all the hard work and the dedication he has. Hey, how you doing, man? This is unbelievable. What I think about when I look at uh, this mountain and everything, is I think about commitment, you know, a guy that's been diligent about his vision. I'm a former preacher. I met you a year ago. Oh, well, God bless your hearts. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to share something with you. In November, I couldn't sleep during the night, so I got up between 3 and 4 one morning. I read your book and wept through the whole thing because God was so uh, evident in the story of your life, your yeah. obedience, your surrender, your availability. Jesus, I want to thank you for yeah. being available. Yeah, God to bless God. your heart. I believe other people, I wish you were on a loudspeaker, that's what you're going to hear. In other words, what happened when you looked in that book, God Almighty says, I'm going to get you scripture in here. And I want God to do that to me, too. I don't want everybody else to get in the scriptures and leave me out here and left here. I want to press into the mark of the high call. That's so right. I honestly believe thanks on me for saying that. Because it's very hard, it's very extremely hard for a minister to, to humble himself and say, well, uh, I've got to get a closer walk with Jesus. But God is going to do it, and I'm privileged to know you on that. It just makes you wonder uh, for your own conviction just to read the Bible and understand what's going on and how he, how he put this all together. It's just breathtaking. It blows my mind. Architects come out and study this um, structure because uh, physically it shouldn't even be standing, but uh, it just shows you the power of God. So it's awesome to be here and uh, just great to see God is love all, written all over the place. Without doubt, Leonard's life will always be a testimony to what God will do with one man's faith. Faith can move mountains, and Leonard shows his faith by his works. If you visit Salvation Mountain, you will see firsthand a life-saving message and a testimony to a lifetime of childlike faith. In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. Sides with Leonard. Whenever he's taking him home, it's probably going to be right from that mountain, one way or the other. And I'm going to tell you, I love the guy.
下。